I want to start my remarks by offering a debt of gratitude to our staff, our faithful Mission Council members, and so many people who have made St. Michael's their spiritual home. The faithful response of so many of you to what God continues to do in your lives is a blessing to me and to the St. Michael's congregation and our wider community. The ability of St. Michael's to effectively fulfill our mission to preach, teach, heal, and make disciples is directly linked to our shared faithfulness in doing ministry together. And it is you, the people of St. Michael's, who make that possible. I am grateful for what you do. Over the past year, our Mission Council has been praying, reflecting, and thinking about what it means for St. Michael's to be the people of God during the COVID-19 pandemic. And as the pandemic, God willing, begins to draw to a close, what it will mean to be faithful in answering the call of Jesus Christ in the future. It is clear to me and the Mission Council that our missional focus to preach, teach, heal, and make disciples is the right focus. The question about how best to be faithful in doing that is the subject of our shared responsibility and work as a people. Jesus leaves his church a single commandment, to go make disciples. Matthew 28, 19, if you don't believe me. And the Mission Council has laid out three broad areas of focus. We believe that focusing on these areas will best enable us to fulfill our mission and to be faithful to the commandment that Jesus has given his church. Those three areas are one, meeting the ongoing spiritual needs of our established congregation and helping them to become saints. Two, developing deeper Christian community amongst our newer congregation and the family service and reaching out in Christian love to our preschool families. And three, developing a more robust online presence to serve as an on-ramp to Christian discipleship through St. Michael's. The ways in which we strive to structure our budget and our time and our efforts are influenced by these three areas of missional focus. There are a number of things you may have noticed and will continue to see more of in the coming months. We are doing a monthly Fun First event with the explicit intention of building Christian community and inviting our new people and ELSA families to be in deeper relationship with one another and us. The monthly outdoor activities we have been doing are a COVID safe way of doing just this. And it is always wonderful when some of our established congregation come out and join in the fun, like in our recent sesquicentennial state park camping trip. What would Jesus brew? Our facilitated theological discussion over dinner and drinks is back. We are working towards a monthly Tuesday night supper that will be catered, and the cost is only going to be $5 per person to participate with a max of $20 per family. God willing, that will begin in January. Our staff is intentional about building our team, coordinating our efforts more closely to better incorporate our ELC into the wider life of the parish. This work is paying dividends. Our family service continues to grow and to bring new people into our midst. Additionally, we have close to 30 people participating in a discipleship group. Many of these people are encountering this deep, small group discipleship for the very first time. Ayush does music with our preschoolers. Carol and I do weekly chapel with the preschool as well. And if you have not had a chance to enjoy some of our story time with Miss Carol videos, then you've got a treat coming to you on our YouTube channel. Our digital first worship service, the stream, is reaching new people. Several of them are now in our discipleship groups with us as well. John Gresham, for instance, who has agreed to serve on mission committee, attends the stream as his primary service and leads a discipleship group. And we have added a number of new families to our community over the past year, and this is a blessing. There have been many, many blessings brought about by the changes the COVID-19 pandemic has forced us to make. There have also been challenges. Our present level of financial stewardship continues to be below what it takes to fund the ministry we are presently doing, and the 2022 budget anticipates a deficit. 
it has been more difficult for those of us who are less digitally inclined over the past couple of years or who enjoy it less to feel as connected to one another and to the congregation. Our inability to gather safely inside for things like Sunday morning breakfast and coffee hour are things that I know people miss. Coffee hour has started again from 9.05 to 10.25 in the North X and on the portico for coffee and light refreshments. Please consider signing up to host a coffee hour. And if there is something from our past that you have found to be a blessing to the community, come see me. Let's talk about it. Let's try to get it started again. Now, we are each ministers for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and every Christian needs ministry work to do. St. Michael's needs your help to preach, teach, heal, and make disciples. And if we are to meet the spiritual needs of our current congregation, foster Christian community, and reach out to the Early Learning Center, and build a more robust online presence, it will take all of us working together with the giftedness God has given us. Doing ministry is a way for us to work toward becoming saints. Now, our success in these endeavors depend upon our cooperation with and obedience to the work of the Holy Spirit. It depends upon us responding in love to what God is doing in our lives by being faithful with our time and our money and our effort. As we move forward into 2022, and beyond, I'm reminded of the story of Joshua and the people of Israel crossing into the Promised Land. Pause this video for just a moment. Go get your Bible. No, seriously, pause it. Go get your Bible because this story from Joshua, chapters 3 and 4, will be really helpful for us and for our purposes. In the story, Joshua is now following in the footsteps of Moses as the leader of God's people, and they are preparing to enter into the Promised Land. Having wandered in the desert for 40 years and being freed from bondage in Egypt, the time has come for Israel to stop wandering and to inhabit the place God has prepared for them. For many of these past couple of years, it has felt like a time in the wilderness as everything seemed to change all at once because of COVID. Familiar patterns of work, Play and worship were disrupted, and some things are still not the way they used to be and may never be again. But as they are preparing to go into the Promised Land, Joshua instructs the leaders of the people to gather everyone near the edge of the River of Jordan. The River Jordan is at flood stage, as it always is during this time of year, and it is treacherous. It is terrifying to attempt the crossing. And yet this is precisely what God is telling them to do. It is time to press forward into the promised land with trusting that he will show the way forward. God tells them to take the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark is where God's presence dwells with his people and in their midst. And they must keep their eyes firmly affixed on the Ark and upon God, and where he is leading them to safely navigate their way through the river and into the promised land. They are to look at the ark and to follow it across the river. This is the moment I think we find ourselves in right now. We are growing forward into the place and ministry God is calling us. We have not been this way before. And cannot be certain of what the world or our congregation or the future will look like post-COVID. But what we can trust, as Paul tells us in Romans, is that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. We can be sure that if we keep our eyes fixed upon God and follow him, that he will lead us safely into his promises and into all good things. The other piece of this story that rings true for me at this time and moment is the need to remember and honor our past while boldly embracing the future God has for us. God instructs Israel in Joshua chapter 4 to gather up stones from the middle of the river, to take these stones and to carry them across to the other side and to stack them as stones of remembrance. And in the future, when the children ask them what these stones are for, 
They are to tell these kids about God's saving work in Egypt. About his faithfulness in the wilderness and how he brought them safely into the place prepared for them. The stones of remembrance are to be taken from the river and placed into the promised land. They must remember and honor their past and what God has done with them. But these stones, the weight of the wilderness, and the time beyond and behind them, are too heavy to carry all the way into the promised land. The past informs who they are and who their children will be. The past gives them a lodestar for helping to navigate into the future. But they must lay down the stones of remembrance so that they can move into the place God has prepared for them. As we continue to discern God's will for St. Michael's and in each of our lives, we must remember and honor our past. The men and women who have come before us are the reason we are where we are today. But we must keep our eyes firmly affixed upon God and follow where he is going. I look forward to doing just that with you.